Welcome back, everybody, to the Italian Football TV podcast. Mm. We are here because Italy qualified for Euro 2024. It might have lost a couple years off our life for the how the game ended, but in the end, we managed to do it with a 0-0 draw against Ukraine. We're going to get into all of that. We're going to talk about the future, how we grade Spalletti's start so far to the Italian national team, what problems we still have within this team. But before we do that, make sure everyone who is watching, if you're watching on video, like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on audio, because we're available on every audio platform, mm -hmm. make sure you rate the podcast with, with five, the five stars. stars, right? Guys, this helps us out more than Cinque we can stelle. describe to you. Cinque Stelle, Cinque, Cinque Romane, Palmi. Me. Cinque. Cinque Romane. So, where do we start? By the way, you look like uh, the guy from Home Alone, the burglar from Home Alone oh, with the hat. Wow, that's right. Maybe that's just right. the Christmas spirit. Yeah, oh, it's, it's cold in so here. I don't know. We, really, I'm hot right I'm now. I'm hot, you gotta, I'm also wearing the merch. Put on the heat. very warm. You said, what, the, what are you? <laughs> well, listen, I'm wearing something that are you I not had... cold? No, Pete. I'm a hot I'm guy. Warm, Come on. I'm a hot it's, guy. It's because I just warmed them up guy. by beating them in some foosball. Ah, that's why. Makes sense. So he's riled up. But ask him who, I, who was playing with me. You played with everyone. I won with everybody. But so. I, I didn't lose. <laughs> with me? Play, yeah, with you. Yeah, thanks for you. Huh? I scored most of the goal anyway. Uh -huh. Anyway, anyway. I got Mr. Producer. He, he really sucked that's next year. Uh, yeah. Dad. What did you make of it? I already I saw you smirking and making a face when I was talking about the tie against Ukraine. Tell well, the truth. What do you What do you want me to start with Spalletti <laughs> or with the team or with the What do you want me to start? We, with? we can start. There's a lot of stuff to break down. Yeah. I want to talk about all of it. I want to talk about even Skamaka. We'll talk about the penalty kick. Mm. If it was a penalty, if it was well, a penalty. Well, you know the biggest problem that we have, and we know we we have said it a million times, is we can't score any goals when it comes. Uh, to okay, so you score five goals, yeah, against North Macedonia, against Malta, against this team, and the you have to score when it counts and when you need that goal that could have put you in in, uh, in another uh, port in the standings. And we can't score a goal, and that's our biggest problem. And he, you know, he tries, uh, he tried with Raspadori, he tried with Immobile, he tried with Scamacca. And we can't find the center forward. I was hoping that Skamaka was the answer and that he would be the one. Uh, I would have liked him to have seen him from the first minute against U Ukraine. Uh, what, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that, that this team uh, cannot find that chemistry uh, and that we can... Uh, uh, you know, we can go and look forward to uh, maybe having a chance to do well in the uh, in the Euro. Uh, the best thing uh, to me is right now is Chiesa. Uh, the guy, he hustles everywhere. There was a play that he was, uh, he was the, the guy beat him two players. Uh, he, he was going down the line and he beat... Uh, Jorginho, forget it. He, he fell down on the floor, and then he beat another guy. And Chiesa came from behind, and it was on the goal line, and he kicked the ball out. And then all the best chances that were that were uh, caused by Chiesa. Too bad that in the beginning he didn't score that goal. I mean, it was it was very close, and that would have maybe make it a little bit easier for uh, for our team. Um, about Spalletti, I mean, he just started. Um, you cannot really give him uh, all the, a lot of uh, faults to him. What I didn't like about him is that he put Jorginho in a very bad position. He should have never taken the penalty shot. Mm. I mean, Jorginho comes back. He, he wants to be the register. He wants to be the guy in front of the area. He controls the game. Even though against Ukraine, the only pass that he made was a 10-yard pass. I mean, at one point, hey, look up. When the, the midfielder get the ball, the first thing that they have to do is they have to look up and see where the forward is. That's a midfielder. Every time he got the ball, he went five yards pass. That's all he did. Five yards, five yards, five yards. I'd like to see him more. He can do it. So I'd like to see Jorginho do more. Do you think, don't but, you think he's the best one yeah, that we have yeah, for yeah. Regista? Yeah, he's the best one. Yeah, but he's yeah. got to do more. Well, you think and he's, he's got to give, and, and, and he's gotta give the ball, the, the true ball, and find the guy there. He did it two times in the whole game and it didn't work out. So, uh, but what I blame Spalletti 
is for putting Jorginho in a position to take a penalty after he had missed three penalty. Now it's four penalty. And then he said, oh, he's, he's still my uh, penalty shooter. But I think the other day, he yesterday, back. he took it back, right? <clears throat> he said, it's the right thing to do. Don't put the guy in a position to, 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 to make himself, because the guy is not going to say no. Yeah. If you say you might, he's going to go there. You miss four penalty. You still miss wanna... another one. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Every time you hop and skip, you're gonna miss the mm. penalty. He's playing hopscotch. Mm. Okay, there, right? unless the goalkeeper <laughs> moves before. But oh, if you hop and skip, it's gonna yeah. be a. They figured it out. They it's it's not gonna be a hard shot. They started. So on. the goalkeeper stays, yeah. stays, stays until the end. Maybe he fakes one side. And he's gonna make a. He's gonna make a save. Okay, so to go back, I, I know being a little bit negative on the way that we played, which I agree because when we were watching this game against Ukraine, we're so disappointed that we didn't score in the first half because we know how these games lend itself. And, you know, at the end, there could have been a penalty kick even for Ukraine where they could have won the game and we would have had to go through the playoffs. So it's annoying we didn't get to that point. My only thing is I give Spalletti a pretty good grade. I think he came into a really bad situation. He had five days to coach the team before starting in the first match where they tied North Macedonia. Mancini left us. In the middle of this, the midst of qualifying for the Euros, he doesn't know who his best team is. You know, he's he put Bongiorno, who we never expected to start uh, in that position. He had Berardi as a starter one game. The next game, he's in the stands. He didn't, he has had no time to figure out who his best team is. All things considered, for me, he gets the pass on. Now, and he said it afterwards, now the beautiful style can begin. Now, what we want from Spalletti, where it has some time, I think we just needed to get through this, this awful position that we're in. And now we could, we'll could, we be able to judge where he's going to be able to play, the style, where we're going to go from there. And also, to be fair, uh, Italy had a few chances in the first half. If Fratesi scored that or there was another chance that would have went in, we would have been like, ah, whatever, uh, easy win. But at the end of the day, yeah, you can blame Spalletti on some things. But there's also players that miss, miss big chances that they could have put the game in, out early, didn't have to worry about it, and didn't have to be stressing the last few minutes for potential other stuff that happened uh, towards the second half. So, yeah, you can say that stuff. And Spalletti was also kind of thrown in here. So you got to also add that into it. You got to give him time. We all know being an international coach, you don't see your players every day. So you got to make a makeshift lineup of only having a few practices. So that must be said. So I just really think it's we can we can give the negatives all day here. I just think it's important that Italy got the qualification. Now they can go in the Euro. Spalletti now has more time with the squad and could actually form a real team together, a real philosophy, something you don't really see unless you play club football. Before we get into the pots and, and the draws and everything that else that we thought, uh, big topic was, and I think the big move where we started playing really bad in the second half was when Raspadori came off. He's clearly, for me, our best number nine. Yeah. We play better football with him, with him, even though he's not really a center forward. He's not the classic number nine that we would love, but he's shown to be better than Immobile. And mm. Skamaka, who, Pete, I know you were critical of Skamaka. I mean, right before we started the podcast, you were talking about it, and I said, let's save it for the show. And even last week, you had said about Skamaka. What did you make first of Raspadori and then of Skamaka coming in? Oh, boy. So I think in the first half, Italy had chances to score. Could they create more? Could they do more? Sure. But I think, it, you know, over the course of that game, it's very tense. So there's, it's a lot of kind of a, a chess match, right? And the X's and O's tactics and trying to fi break down a, a defense. Obviously, Zagnolo miss a chance. Fratesi miss a chance. Mm -hmm. You score those, all of a sudden things kind of open up. So I was a little surprised by Raspadori getting subbed off and immediately, you know, in the start of the second half. Um, Skamaka came in and I think he just had the wrong approach to the game because every every time he was on the ball he was slow he didn't he was trying to switch balls and it, it took forever to switch a ball uh, his touch was was terrible so uh, if you come in and you have the responsibility of being that number nine and you want to be the starter for Italy these are the games that you have to come up and you have to score or you have to freaking play as if this mm. is your, your life mm -hmm. on the line and I didn't see that. And I and I know, and I liked the fact that Spalletti went over there to go talk to him and say, oh, you have to wake up, you know, mm. you know, in a sense to say, hey, this is not a, you know, contract that you have four years that you signed and you can live scot-free. The next day I can say, you know what, you don't come and play for, for the national team anymore. So that's something that each of these players have to have in their head to say, hey, this is, this is not a, a luxury. This is not a chance for you to just 
come out and play. This is, you know, you have the whole country, uh, you know, hanging on a, on a, on a thread. So I didn't like his approach. What I said before was Skamaka, obviously, uh, He's, he's got the tools. You know, I'm not going to say that he doesn't have the skill set to be a prolific number nine. But for him to just score goals versus, uh, you know, the smaller teams in Serie A is great. You got to score versus the bigger teams. You got to score when it matters. Or else you're at Immobile 2.0. He scored against England. Yes, uh, but... And it was a 1-0 to it was a, a sh- It was a... He like that I think any... I any sh- <laughs> no, I don't off. like it because <laughs> the goal that he scored, by all means, he has to be there and you put the you put the ball in the back of that. But I think 95% of strikers are going to score that goal. Listen, I, let me just say a few but, By the way, one, sorry, one more thing. There was one play where Chiesa put the ball, he squared the ball right inside the middle and Raspadori wasn't there. Maybe because he's not a classic number nine. If Scamaco was there, maybe he would have scored that. So... Being in the right position at the right time, yeah, reading the play, and knowing where it is, it could have changed the entire game for us. Listen, let's just let me just. I've point. been hearing, I've been hearing you guys I just, uh, you know, trying to find, trying to find a, a little excuse for Spalletti. Just got a team for five days with this and that. I said, let me just say something. Spalletti doesn't live in the North Pole. Spalletti lives in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Spalletti, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus. Spalletti's been watching well, the Italian Mario. national team as well as everybody That's else. That's why we're gonna make the a difference. You still have to me, feel the players. Listen to me. So you know how to put the team on the, on the line. Spalletti has <laughs> been watching this team like just about everybody else. In Italy, everybody's a coach. He's a coach, I'm a coach, or a coach, everybody's a coach. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. They do say it. They do like to say it. It's my turn. He's right, he's right. Okay? It's my turn. Tell him how to. Okay. If he was that smart, okay? You know that uh, Fratesi, who else plays together? I don't know. There are three players over there that you name. No, three players that they play in Sassuolo. Oh. You put them on the same, on the same, uh, the chemistry is already there. Okay. okay. Raspadori, Fratesi, Escamacca, somehow they played it together before. So that's some sort of a chemistry is there already. And including even your, uh, your midfielder from Juventus. He played for, uh, for the same, they actually played for the same team. So he's trying to reinvent the, you know, the, the, the wheel. And including Berardi. Berardi was not supposed to be sitting on a... <laughs> Berardi. Yeah, no, yeah, where are we yeah. going with this? Yeah, seriously. Berardi was Look, not... Locatelli wasn't even available. I know, but if you want to just get start with some chemistry, you just with the people, start start with the people that the, the chemistry is already built in. Oh, yeah, you can laugh as much as you want. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, okay, let me finish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, 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 go on. Guys, let him no, finish. No, no, <laughs> no, no, you, no, you, you got all my talk messed up. No, 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 Okay, I don't understand. You guys keep keep defending this uh, this Spalletti, Spalletti, Spalletti. Just got the, the team for five days. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. Number one. Number two. All of the big titles that I seen uh, I seen on the on the papers. Uh, Defendiamo l'Europeo. What is it that you're defending? We should be actually ashamed the way we we made it through the next stage because that that penalty, like it or not, to me was one hundred percent a penalty. Mm. Okay. Let's let's build on that. To let's, fa- the let's, fact the fact that you, we've been bragging about it, we've actually been rubbing it in. We, you know, generationally, we've been wronged all the time in the national team. This time, when we are wronged somebody else, I don't feel comfortable. We were rubbed by Moreno when we were playing in uh, in, uh, in 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 Asia. We've always been wronged by the ref. This time, the ref has wronged Ukraine. Okay, you can laugh as much as you want. You can just uh, find any excuses that you want about Spalletti, about this, about that. I don't think we should be celebrating uh, the way uh, no one all of you are. Uh, you know, you're just okay. You no, know, let's uh, yeah, you know, let's uh, let's build from this. There is nothing to be built over here. You have to start from scratch. Okay, so let, let's do the penalty. Uh, let, let's talk about the penalty. That penalty. Was you, you say it's a penalty. One hundred percent. Okay, so. I will say in live time, I 1 million percent thought that it would be given and I thought that it was a penalty. And when I watch it back, you do have some doubts. You know, you're looking, does he really touch him? Does he not touch him? For me, though, if we reverse the roles, if I look at if that was Italy, I would say that that's a penalty kick. Now, the one interesting thing is I've seen from everybody a lot of disagreement. Disagreement from not just Italians, especially from Americans, from people all around saying it's not a penalty. Uh, he dove a little bit. He exaggerated the contact. Whether you agree, whether you disagree, the fact that there's this conversation means that it's probably not clear and obvious. 
But with that all being said, for me, it's a penalty kick. What do you guys say? So, uh, when the first look uh, that I saw, he hits, uh, he hits, Cristante hits him uh, right above between the knee mm -hmm. and the ankle. He hits him right there. That's a penalty. Then I saw a different view, and it looks like he doesn't touch him from that view. But I never saw it in slow motion. I always saw it live. Um, I was trying to look and see. I mean, I'm sure that the VAR would have looked at uh, in slow motion and they would have seen yeah, if there yeah. was a touch. I mean, if he touched them, it's a penalty. There's no doubt about that. Um, saying that, I mean, he was right there. The referee was right there. Uh, probably had the best Field look game. at it. And uh, if he didn't call it and he didn't go to the VAR, means that he was pretty sure of what he saw. Because at least, at least you should have gone to the VAR and you should have gone look at it and see what was the... the uh, so the VAR right now, the way it's been used, it's not working. Okay, so they have to modify a little bit. I don't know if it's the coach that throws the flag, maybe he gets a flag, one in each half, one in the first half, one in the second. He throws the flag, he's got to go watch the VAR. Um, I don't know if that's the answer. That's what they do here in uh, in football. football. Yeah. Um, I, when I saw the first that I saw, it's a penalty because he got him. He got him right here. He got him right here. It's a penalty. Anything different than that, Mike? I mean, the first time I saw, I thought he stepped on him. Uh, then seeing on the replay, I I saw what Gaetano said. It looked like he clipped him yeah. right above the knee. Yeah. But then right. you look at a different Sorry. angle. Right about the knee. Yeah, right, right. above the knee. But yeah. it, it was very... I so don't know. Think? The angle wasn't very penalty clear. No penalty? And, and based, on, based on what Gaetano said, they probably, if they did see something, they would have called them over. So you would have to put, give the benefit of the doubt and say... Hopefully VAR knew what they're talking about there. The referee. for you, what do you say? Correct call? A lifetime, I would have gave it, but looking it now. over, probably not. I, I probably think it was um, no penalty. No penalty, okay. Close, so we got close call, close call. Pete? For me, close. I think it's a penalty. No matter how much Mudrick throws himself and whatnot, if there's contact in the box and you're cutting him off, that's a penalty. Like you said, if we were on the other side, we would not be happy right now. <laughs> that's we true. have a whole different discussion. So... Yeah. It doesn't matter if him throw, throwing, you know, himself or whatever. There was there was contact there. Now, I, I I think what maybe transpired is the fact that the referee saw that he didn't step on his foot, and maybe he evaluated that as being more of a 50-50 if he's clashing yeah, into the yeah, guy's yeah, league yeah. And, and not calling because, because of that reason and then calling off the VAR. We don't know because we don't have access to the communication. We don't have access to, uh, you know, the... The, the live feed or whatever. Who was at the uh, bar? Gaetano so sent me a cartoon. A, and that no, was a no, man, no. Man, Menzano was the referee. Uh -huh. And <laughs> apparently, yeah, according, keep, keep, it keep it in the group Gaetano, chat. Keep it in the group chat. Don't say it. I'll leave it on the group chat. Okay, okay all right. Let's leave it on that. If any of our group chat got out, they can't handle on the All right. So anyway, listen, listen. They say that the referee, Manzano, who's a Spanish referee, they say that he's very notorious for doing this inside the box. Like he's very lenient. Uh, I spoke to somebody that covers the Spanish league and knows him pretty well. So they mm. said that it's not surprising that he made this call. He was pretty obvious. Mm. The only other thing I just want to add, because I've seen this going around, everybody's using Sefidin's quote from a couple of months back saying, Italy needs to be at the Euros. You know, it's not a tournament without Italy. And they're comparing no. it to say that this is Italy getting help. No, no, no. no. Everybody listen, that's doing that, no, you that you're not doing but, it as a you joke, know what? But, it's, it's actually but, pretty embarrassing. Marco, listen to this, listen to this. For, you know, when you've been wronged several times in uh, important international competition and world championship, including, uh, you know, the World Cup, and then you, you are, you, you've been put on the same position that you were before when you were wronged. But I don't want to see any celebration, period. I don't want to see the Gazette or the Corriere. I don't want to see anybody kind of a bragging that we, abbiamo passato il turno, no, let's concentrate and let's defend the, 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 the,
you know, just quiet it down, let the dust settle. But the question was, was it was a penalty different. or not? It was. It was a penalty. Okay. okay. So, so we got uh, lucky, and yeah. I think Ukraine, well, I, we're not sure if they, they would have a score right. on the penalty. We have a top of the line goalkeeper, but right, 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 you never right. know. Yes. I mean, uh, One last thing about this, and it doesn't matter, but if you looked at Cristante's face, mm. Oh, oh my yeah. God! That's a good oh, point. He looked, he looked hey, so what are you guilty. doing? Going, he yeah. looks so he guilty. So what guilty. are you doing going into that challenge? Yeah, that was he dangerous. Looked, but he looks so guilty. Once yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. yeah. I didn't look his expression oh. because uh, <laughs> I was already, I was already yeah. out. I said, okay, we got, we, we got. We never, we never would have seen Cristante ever again. He turned, yeah. he turned yeah. white. That but, but also, that's why we can't. <laughs> I hope we use it as a lesson, even though it wasn't given, on why we can't leave these moments to the final minutes. Because you, when you start playing for that tie, things get bad. Guys, let's talk about the pots because one of the big things is that Italy ends up in pot four now. I don't understand how these work at all. I'm going to explain it and we have it on the screen right now. Pot one, Germany, Portugal, France, Spain, Belgium, England. So we play one of them. Pot two, Hungary, Turkey, Rome, uh, Romania, Denmark, Albania, Austria. We play one of them. Pot three, Netherlands, Scotland, Croatia, Slovenia, Slovakia, and Czechia. And then pot four, at the moment, it's Italy, Serbia, Switzerland, and then it could be um, Mike's uh, Greece. Greek, wow. Greece, the playoffs in Poland, March. Poland. There's a lot. There's a lot. And of uh, teams. Ukraine could still be able to get in. Either way, we know who we could be. I don't understand the fact that we get into pot four. Well, it's based on points. I That's know. what they said, mm. which is so, strange. But uh, you the know points what? that you you qualify. So we have in fourteen points. You know, and Mama, the other what teams does it make? Which part you are? You, you, we're lucky we made it through the, 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 <laughs> the, 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 this, uh, to this uh, European uh, qualification. The only, the only uh, I mean, in part two, three, and four, in part two and three, there's not really a team that is better than yeah. us if we play our game. That's all. You I mean, know, Croatia, play? in part three, Netherlands and Croatia are very strong. Yeah, they are strong. And in part two, Scotland too is Den also in Denmark, Denmark, Denmark is very strong. Um, Austria, we played already, and we they, they gave us a tough test. We went to extra time with them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think there is the backstory to we have struggled big time against teams that play low blocks. So it might play in our benefit if we play teams that try to play open and, and that are better. Mm. Italy tends to That's a good wake point. up. Uh, I always am scared of the teams that sit back. Like when we played Macedonia, they clog space, and we don't have those creative, tricky players up top that – can unlock it. Once teams play open, all right, now we start playing. But it is what it is. And uh, yeah, those are the pots. I think I I, I agree with him in this kind of assessment that he made about the, our situation right now. You play small team that they tend to, to be very defensive, you're never going to go through. And it's a big suffering. On the big chances, on the big team, you know, that the big names over there, you just go over there and you play your game. You have to just sh showcase what you have and what you're capable to do. So it's a lot more room, whether it's going to be on the counter, or whether it's going to yeah, be... But uh, listen, but, uh, we versed England. They were a lot better than us and we got Listen, spanked, now we got so. time. We got time. We played to, a good first half. It was something to build upon. Yeah, we, but England's also, we're talking around. about the top, top, top yeah. tier of yeah. maybe the best team right now, one mm -hmm. of the best teams in the yeah. world. We got well, time to regroup right now and to just put uh, uh, our best best effort to find out which which hole to plug and what kind of a scheme for us works better especially once we the draw they're going to be made i don't know which which date they're going to do the which date they're going to make the draws of the of the of the groups i thought it's december the, 2nd oh okay I I so play the playoffs no don't they have so we got do they have to play the playoffs first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to finish the playoff, I guess. So we have a few when weeks it, away. Do they? No, they can I don't just think say, they need to. No, because they can no? just say playoff one, two, yeah. and three. Oh, okay. So when is, the, when playoffs is the playoffs in March. Oh, wow. You got a long time to wait. Oh. Mm. A long time. But your your route is Kazakhstan, right? So you we play, play Kazakhstan? Kazakhstan, and then we play the winner of Luxembourg or Georgia. Mm, so two Georgia's finals. Tough. Georgia's tough. Georgia's tough. Mm. So, all right, between the between now and then, we can find another uh, spectacular strikers uh, that is going to be. Find, well, he's gonna you know, that is going to be. Camarda, Camarda. <laughs> they they, they, they might go to Argentina. Yeah. yeah. Well, another Retegi, right? Before, I want to I get everybody's thoughts on what, what needs to be changed. If there's players on Italy that you don't want to see again and who you do want to see, who made it, you know, by the time we're talking about the Euros in 2024. Before we do that, I want to remind everybody we ha still have merch available, Cultural Tour merch. You see, Mike and I are rocking mm. the sweatshirts. There's also sweat shorts, two different types, sweat pants. 
They're some of the pants. comfiest sweats you will ever wear. And where did super I find soft. the description? It's at the bottom, right? Top of the description. Huh? Top of the it's description, the Top guys. of the description. Okay. Uh, go support. Guys, this keeps IFTV going. Uh, people who have already been getting it, they're sending us pictures. They're sending us videos, wearing the stuff. It's awesome. It took us almost a year to get these made. And um, yeah, top of the description, ItalianFootballTV.com. Mm. So who do we like and who do we not like? We have Buongiorno as a defender. I don't mind him. I think he can. He can. Uh, I think he plays very well in, uh, in the Torino under uh, uh, Juric. I think he's. I think he's the captain of Torino, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's a great defender. It was ballsy. I thought it was very uh, ballsy, ballsy, ballsy to put him against Ukraine, but he he did he did he did okay. He didn't he, do bad. He had a yellow two in the seventh minute, and he still played a good game. Yeah, he, he didn't do bad at all. But that, that was definitely a risky one. I I gotta say, I would have a challenge a challenge oh. Donnarumma a little bit, not not to take him off the I team, but you. I would put Bicario. Uh, he made some big saves of Donnarumma. Well, big Donnarumma save. Donnarumma he made save. one one. He also made a big mistake that could have ended. You that. see, you see on on that that, that stupid uh, ball over there. I would have just uh, maybe start Vicario from time to time. I agree with you because on Because you never know what the soccer situation or what the game situation is going to be. Donnarumma can get a red card. You need somebody ready. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will just alternate some, you know, in some of the game, even on the friendly. Just put Vicario. He's doing great in, in Spurs. But that's what I'm saying. We, I, need, really I, wanted, I wanted to see Vicario dressing, uh, dressed up uh, with, uh, with the goal. Uh, goal what shot. about Di Lorenzo? Am I crazy that no, I like it's Damiano? Not, it's not national team uh, caliber. No, not I at think all. he plays better for Napoli than he does with Azzurri. Mm -mm. Yo, he's just mistake prone. Every time he gets the ball, I'm scared. Yeah. Um, I'm like tense that he's going to make a mistake. I feel like Darmian, he's super reliable. He plays it simple. He plays it calm. We don't need our right back to be bombing forward. We have that with our left back. We have enough players that do that. He's and Di Marco looks uh, amazing, by the way, again. Yeah. As always, the guy becomes a yeah, creative he, force in attack. You know what I would like consistently to see on this team? I wanted to see Fratesi and Barella playing all the time, starting the game. And I like to see Scamacca and, uh, and Raspadori playing at the same time. Okay, you have to play them at the same time. Don't let formations. somebody... That's what I'm saying. So those are the people that they have to be on the field. Not that you bring them in when the situation, uh, you know, uh, requires for you to use them. Those are the top players that we have right now. You have to use them from the very beginning. Then you put the game away and then you starting to change things around. Don't make yourself, uh, don't make yourself found in an emergency situation that you have to bring them in because you needed to fix the game or you needed to catch up with the scores. They could, I think they could play together yeah. as well, Raspadori and Oh, definitely. I think with Raspadori a little bit behind if you did like 4 2 3 1. The problem, too, also is the right wing. Zagnolo. I'm not. For me, Zagnolo is not a starter on the Italian national well, team. You got Berardi. Oh, you got Berardi. Why can't you, why can't you put uh, Raspadori there? I don't, on the wing, no, I don't think he's. No, 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 no. I think no, he's no, better no. in central. Okay, Same why not? So from the, from the wing, he goes to the middle. But to be fair, Zagnolo hasn't even been playing good Zagnolo. in Aston Villa. I'm not he with, he uh, has not performed for a club. But how did he get sent to the stands because he, he played yeah, so poor? This is the, the question that I, I have about uh, Spalletti. You know, one time you put Berardi, then you put him on the stand. Politano. Then you put Zaniolo. Then one play games, one games he doesn't play. Then you put Buongiorno. Then you put Mancini. Then you take him out. Mm, uh, then you put Biraki. Then you take him out. Then you put Gatti. Then you take him out. Then you put Bonaventura. Bonaventura scores. He's one of the best. And then the next me. game he doesn't play. And then you put him back. And then you take him out. It seems to me like it is not really clear on who's to on play. the yeah. top. Who are the top eleven? To me, to me, we are okay with goalkeepers. We are okay with defenders. We got Mancini. We got Darmian. We got. I think Spin Spinazzola. We got De Marco. I think we are good in the defense. In the midfield, we got Bonaventura, we got Fratesi, Barella. We have enough. Giorgino. I think Giorgino. I mean, we Not have enough. enough. Where the qu big question mark that, that, he has to, that he has to be able to resolve is the forward line. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who the... You know. I can't... Chiesa, Chiesa, yes. Chiesa is the only one. So if you play the 4-3-3, mm -hmm. please find the other two guys that are going to play with Can you Chiesa. put a Sharawi on the right-hand side? Yeah. You know. Oh, that's I think we said uh, Shara, we maybe oh, off the bench. Right? Eric, can he play on the, off the bench? Not as a starter. Not as a starter yeah. off the bench. Me, Gatan, who do you, who, who's your front three? Yeah, who do you like? Who do you, who, who All right, so pick? what I will put is Kies on one side. Yeah. I will put Raspadori and Scamacca in the middle. Okay. So so Raspadori on the wing. But yeah. Pete, why, what about you? Because he's, 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 he's not playing. He doesn't play there. He's got Napoli or... But he That's doesn't. It. Okay. He doesn't play as a center forward, to be fair, either. You know, he doesn't play center forward. He plays more central. You know, Politano... 
Uh, you know, he, he, maybe he could do it. I'm but, why, but why can Raspadori start on the wing and then come to the middle and, and be behind the two forwards? He can go, and then the right fullback can go mm. wide, or sometimes he can go wide and then cross the ball. The last time he's played there was with Sassuolo, and they he's, transformed. He, his, I mean, he's fast, he's got the them. skills. I, I think I, Pete, what uh, he's a very intelligent player. You know, if we got to say something about Raspadori, for he's me, he smart, makes yeah. our team. Play Pete, a lot better what, happened, when he's on the pitch. what happened with Politano? Why did he? Why was he taken out during the game? Just I mean, to defend, they had to defend the game. He came in and they got subbed. Why cannot play defense at all? This guy here. No, I mean, put, they put got me out. A, uh, a defensive player. What Anto? happened to Retigui? He, he, he had a knee injury. He's got a knee. Injury. Okay. Mm. Pete. Or uh, can we get uh, Marco? Can we get a center forward from Palermo? Who? <laughs> He's, he's been scoring his... Bruno. Uh, oh, Bruno. Oh, he's, uh, he's old he's, now. He's like th- uh, late 20s, early 29s. 30s. 29. He's scoring goals. He's what? Uh, if Argentinian, uh, I think he's got Italian... Uh, that is a young kid. That, they're trying to get Sule. Sule would be perfect on the right. <laughs> if we could convince Sule. So, uh, the guy's mm, he's been scoring know. goals, right? Is he going to throw him around? Yeah, but that's, that's a big... <laughs> that's a big jump. Big jump. Serie B to Euros. <laughs> that's a nice little resume right. boost. He could have used that... Uh, Bring Are you sure it's from Palermo? It's not from Castellamare del Golfo. Are him you saying there. this without being biased, by the way, Gaetano, <laughs> by any him, chance? Let or him no? uh, yeah. practice with the team. No, it's not biased. Are you not being biased because he plays for Palermo? It's double right? bias. I mean, he's bringing... He, when he's he's, he has brought players like Buongiorno. What what did he but he's in Serie A. There's a big yeah. difference between Serie A and so, Serie B, no? Listen, we need a center four. We need somebody that can put the ball in the net. That's, That's what we need. So, do a little bit... Be, become a little bit creative. We have nobody that can pull the ball in the net. So take a chance. Spalletti said he's not afraid. Mm. Okay. He tells the other coaches, oh, this guy's afraid. The other guy's afraid. <laughs> You're Who not afraid. He he, he's huh? Who did he say that about? He said about Allegri. He said that Allegri he doesn't have, uh, he's, he's an, uh, a coach that is afraid. He doesn't have the balls. Oh, I mean, boy. He's, he's not wrong. Did you see how happy Keza was? That he uh, attacking football. that he played some attacking football. I I thought Keza's Keza's words were pretty important when he said to Macedonia. Said. They said, "Oh my God, you guys had a blackout where you conceded two goals to Macedonia and it went three two. And he said, "No, I wouldn't consider it a blackout." He said, oh, yeah. "That's what happens when we try to play um, forward thinking football. When we try to play attacking football, is sometimes yeah you concede goals, but guess what? Number one, they came from silly mistakes. But this is the style that we're going down with, you know and." To be honest, I think that's the right way. I think that that's the future of where football is going. It's it's the way that yeah. if we bring Spalletti in, that's a style that we need to play. We just haven't been able to implement it fully yet because he hasn't had the time. Yeah. And he had a lot of injuries. Also, the first time because we played Macedonia and Ke- and England and Chiesa was not around. He, had, he was missing a lot of big players for the first two games. Mm-hmm. So, again, he was thrown into a very, very difficult position. Right, and talk, uh, really quick, talking about um, wingers, our producer brought up, how about Orsolini? Nah. I like him. Oh, I so like him. But Orsolini played. He tried. Oh, so he played. He's, 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 I think he's too oh, hot like and cold. Him. I like he's him. He's too hot and cold, yeah. that guy. Yeah, yeah, he has yeah. one weekend. He scores a hat trick, and then he goes missing for four when months. When you go, we're looking for starters over here. When you reach the national team, okay, you have to produce every game. Yeah, of course. Okay, that's why you're in the national team. Yes. You know, you can't have a you know all the great players. They all they all come true when it comes to the big game. Okay, so we need people that come true now and all the great coaches, the best coaches in the world. You said you have to take a little risk. Mm -hmm. You cannot win without a risk. Of course. You know, you got to throw people in the area and you got to attack. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. you're never going to win. The thing I love about Kiesa is every time he gets the ball, he looks forward. Every time everybody else that gets the ball, the the first look is back. They back. They all look back to pass the ball back. Yeah. And now he's a, no, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to win any games like that. I you you need to you. take a risk. You need to put, you need to throw people inside the area, you know, to, to win the game. I was just uh, reading latest news. Uh, Di Marzio just said, Spalletti is going to bring in Insigne back for the right wing. Oh game. my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> please. At that point, you can take Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I think I want to see I a want reaction. A also, what, <laughs> what I see with Italy also. <laughs> I won in Miami, by the way. <laughs> Italy is it's. I won the tour, tournament, baby. Goal. You need to be able to find what the country stands for as a football nation, and I think that's something that we've also lost. <laughs> see, so what do you mean by that? Meaning that you know we always had the luxury of having the star players 
that were amazing technically and, and you know, generational talents if it were any other country, right? But mm -hmm. then the guys that weren't the top players, and there were plenty of them that played for the Italian national team, they played with their heart, con la grinta, and, and they went to battle every single day. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's one thing that I think is missing. Because if you're Berardi, I'm sorry, if you're too afraid to leave Sassuolo, then you're not a national team player, okay? That's how I see it. So at, at that point... No you're not Berardi. you're not this phenomenal that you have to go through and try to skillfully break. You have to work hard. You have to go into tackles and win the ball and try to and always try to be proactive in in doing stuff. So I think Italy also, you know, this beautiful football is imp is important that we we have this style which is great to see. But we have to also respect our traditions, mm -hmm. soccer wise, and and I think that's what we're missing a little bit of that cattiveria. A little bit mm. of that hunger, you know, hunger to succeed, to be proud of the the Italian and wearing the Italian national team. Mm. So wait, wait are you saying so Berard doesn't play because he's a swallow? I don't understand what you mean. No, by what that. I'm getting at is that Berardi is, is not uh, the Totti del Piero. So, well, so at that so point, you, you gotta work. You uh, have to work. You can't you work. can't be missing a game, uh, you know, from a game or not playing or just because you're gonna be over there to try to. To shoot the ball in a certain way, you have to work up and down. Maybe for nobody all the exactly players. knows why he was sat on the on the on the stand. No, Maybe he was not feeling well. Who knows? What no, that, that, I, that. I mean, he didn't. I'm he not, didn't have a I didn't mean to North single out. I didn't mean to just single out Berardi. I'm talking about all these guys. No, I know. What Zaniolo you mean. is I a half a phenomenon. Like they're not anything near a mm. Totti del That's Piero. True, so you have to work. When you're not the top, that you got to work to be the top. Only Cassano doesn't so, have to work. Uh, that's right, guys. Let's do this. We that's asked, right, we right. asked our Instagram uh, to send us in just some topics. We could, we could do these like super rapid fire mm. before we conclude. Mm. Uh, ben Hamin brings up uh, right here. He says five Italian managers qualified for Euro 2024. It's a record for the Euros ever. Twenty percent of the coaches will be Italian. We've got Montella at Turkey. We've got. Tedesco, who's Italian, uh, German, German, Italian Tedesco, but he was born he was born in Italy. Uh, Rossi from Hungary, Spalletti from Italy, and Calzona, Calzona, not Calzona, Calzona, Calzona is nice, uh, from Slovakia. Mm. Five Italian coaches, and these are not even the biggest names of all time. Mm -hmm. Antonio said everybody in Italy is a coach, so <laughs> <laughs> you know that's we, right. To have five is that's right. Should have yeah. been so remarkable. We look we like something. we develop coaches. We can't develop a striker. So nah. uh, coaches, my gosh, we're unbelievable <laughs> at coaches. Three out of the top four last year in the ratings were Italian as well: Spalletti, and Zaghi, and Deserbi. And Guardiola was first, but we were second, third, and fourth. So at least we got something going for us. Anyway, a little <laughs> shout out from there, Antonio, Antonio Lafleur. Mm. Is his name, ninety six? He says, "Guys, remember rapid fire, quick. Can Italy defend their Euro twenty twenty four title? The way it is right now, no. Well, no one expected them to do last time they did, so yeah, why not? No, no. The way it is right now, no. But that's how it was last time too, and they won. No, no, we don't, we, we're on. not even. Close. No one expected them. But you can't, you can't make an argument for something that I don't want to say fluke, but for lack of a better word." Everything just, worked I'm out perfectly saying, no, that summer. I'm just saying no one expected it other than they did it. That's what the, I mean. The only thing is, Italy, when we get to the tournaments, all of a sudden, even though yeah, it's so kick tough off, for uh, us to struggle, they I do think better. that we could do well. Um, should This is, comes from Kanguru. Inter Kanguru. Kangaroo? <laughs> Kangaroo. I don't know. Can G-U-R-O. Should Jorginho stop taking the penalties for Italy? One, Absolutely. Two, three. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I so, almost went to the cardiologist every time that I see this guy here at uh, on the penalty, uh, you know, area. I mean, it's not I fair for him to for the players. It's not fair from Italy, and it's not fair you for know. Jorginho either. Yeah, yeah, look at that. So Enrico likes a Jorginho. I don't know, but uh, you know, our, our producer, producer he likes him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a good point. Daniel, one. shout out to Daniel. Oh he says God. Albanian national team. Seven Serie A players are in their first eleven wow. in the starting eleven. Can you believe? Probably shout more out Serie A players in Italy if you think about it. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> think about it. Kimi but, has a question just for Anto. He said, "Anto, who is the best player in Italy right now? Right now? Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> pa, 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 pa. I would say Barella still." I like that one. No, I think Chiesa's got to nah, be No, no, Barella to me is the, is the heart of the Italian national team. Yeah, I said Chiesa. Yeah, Chiesa. Chiesa. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> Noah asks. <laughs> <laughs> It's a free country. Uh, Noah, Noah asks, he says, I love Skamaka, but it seems like he's always out of it. Should Retegi start over Skamaka? Uh, too many switches, man. I de- definitely, yes. I think it's more deadly. It's more, uh, it's it's uh, like a piece of ice. It gets a, one or two chances. It's going to put, it's going to put them in. I mean, I like it, I it. but Skamaka has been doing good for Atalanta. Nah. I say keep him, keep him going. Be consistent, though. If Retegui is healthy, Retegui, I, I will start him. Different type of player. Retegui is more uh, on the, you know, the, what they call, offside line. Mm-hmm. I like Last him. man, he's I always like going to try to get into the area. That, yeah, that's but true. you need the service to be able to, to be effective there. Whereas Skamaka... He has the skill set to hold up the ball to to, the to bring the team up yeah. and to be able to You don't to need move. that. We hold the, the ball thing, too much. But and he's also an a- aerial threat can shoot from anywhere like he yeah. is he is there. The only thing is he's got to wake up. So. No, we don't need people to wake up. We need people to be ready. And Retake is ready to go. Okay? If he's healthy, Retake is so Yes or no? He scored some nice goals at, at Genoa. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll give take, him a chance. Yeah. Wow, you want a mouse come on, huh? The only good thing that I like about Retegi is he smells the goal. He mm-hmm. knows where to be at the right time. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't need a lot of chances to score goals. Mm-hmm. I think Genoa has the best conversion rate with the fewest shots on target compared to goals scored. And he scores, to Peter's point, that I know he hates Kamaka for, he scores in the big games. Mm-hmm. He scored in a big mm-hmm. moment. So yeah. actually, He's from I do... Karikati. <laughs> That's it. There we go. Last question. Discuss, please, the ideal <laughs> center back starter. There's too much change going on. Who should be the starter? A Cherby plus who? Who should be a Cherby? I would put a Cherby, Bongiorno, and maybe Mancini. The no, three no. centers. Wait, you don't three in the back? What's the question? Don't play three in the back. And this, this question comes from Elijah Daniel Maschio. Yeah. Okay. Bastoni, man. Keep it inter, keep it chemistry, and keep them together. Uh, the problem is we have too many left footed center backs. So oh, I think you have to. It's in a game. It's going to make a difference. So I feel like it's hard to have two left foot. You have to have Mancini as one of the starters, no, even though I'm not no, absolutely no, crazy no, about no, him. No. And then you either one. I, 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 I don't even think Bastoni. a Cherby no, is Bastoni. the that's solid. Bastoni's I think Bastoni. Bastoni. Bastoni's got it. Bastoni. Bastoni. I like Bastoni. Mm-hmm. Bastoni and? Bastoni and... Uh, so if if too many left, left foot you can have. So I would have a Cherby and Mancini or Bastoni and Mancini. Mancini? Yeah, I don't like that? Mancini at all. He he's so hot. He can do one stupid thing and it can cause Italy the whole game. He's not a smart I, I player. Would a, I would give Bongiorno a chance. Bongiorno he's irrational. Bastoni, double, double B. <laughs> I don't well, think they're both too left footed. I'd play both. I think they're the best hard that we have. You distribute and it's mm. pressing. I wouldn't play Mancini. I don't trust him. He's not. He's not a what secure center back. Anyone put Gatti? Nah. He's. A, I put him ahead of Mancini. I mean, I have Gatti over Mancini. I don't like Gatti. Neither do I. What? Buongiorno. I want to play some replays of what he's on the Gatti's Roma. too slow. Buongiorno is solid. It's like a... He, it's like a one. It's intimidating. <laughs> if you look at Buongiorno, <laughs> it's actually yeah, the intimidating. Guy, the, guy, the guy went by him and he grabbed him by the shirt. Ah, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, <laughs> Just wrestling down. Oh! Oh, yeah. All right. You're supposed to be fast. That's, that's intimidating like right there. If you're playing in the back, you got to be fast. We'll have to play to, to, to Manchester. So what? what you have to play in Inter and Juventus to qualify uh, to play for, for, for the national team. Listen, 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 Darmian is not. He, oh, yeah. You know what? He's not. I'm yeah. just reading this comment yeah, no, too from Espin, to and he says, "Play Darmian yeah. as a center." No, no, Darmian is not going to be a three-man center back. Modern football, today's football. I've seen Guardiola; he takes fullback, yo, he converts him into center back. Why we got to be so? He plays as three. No, that's different. Three man and two man is completely different. But we don't know if he could do it or not. But he's not a natural center back. Okay, but we don't know if he could do it or not. Why are you gonna mess around and do that when you have? Because we're desperate. We're because we just because look at us. We're yes, we are. In the center back position, none of us agreed on who should be the center back partners. Mm. What do you say? None of us. I just listen to what I just said. Five of us. None of us agreed on who should be the center back partners, which means uh, there's not a clear to, starter. Everyone wants to be cute and pick different things. Not, but I think the I think the most natural things is what is that is who is not Mancini. That okay, who, who is he it? just asked who I, I, who is not. I said mine. A Cherby and a Baston. I think they're the most. Even though they're both left footed, I think they're the, they're the safest option for it. They make yeah. the least amount of mistakes. They play the safest amount, and they don't do any boneheaded. You cannot errors. have the guy in the center being a left footer. And you're gonna put Darmian, they, who's they, a they, fullback they, 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 and a center back. You gotta be able to use both feet. Gotta mm-hmm. find a solution. We have until 2024, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao.